What's up, guys? It's your boy. I can't talk like that. Um, hey, guys. What we're going to be doing is talking about how to create a modular level using some basic textures here. And all these are PNGs. These were created in Photoshop. And uh, this is from an earlier work. Uh, this is before I thought about color. You can see I've got some orangey wood and some some really dark brown wood here. None of these really cohesively fit together. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how we can actually use uh, really simple, small textures to build out level assets for our game. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is a number of different textures. Like I said, these are created in Photoshop and these were all done for a couple little exercises we had in previous classes. Um, these were taking either existing images and then painting over those to make those feel a little bit more like they matched in a certain world that we were trying to make or they were painted from scratch. And this is using an, uh, an exercise, I think his um, name is uh, Jamin Chule or Jamin Chule. I'll share the link to you guys. Um, he is a really talented uh, 2D artist. I think he does a lot more than that. Um, but he paints textures and very amazing texture artist. And this is uh, based off of his techniques that I'll share with you guys um, in the comments. So, uh, and at least in our class. So, uh, this is going to be how we construct our images here. And these images are going to be what drives our level that I'm about to create. And what I want you guys to be thinking about when you're creating your level is how to be able to construct these things so that they are uh, modular. And modular is an important idea. Um, for this exercise, we're not gonna really worry about um, the measurements or anything like that. I'm just gonna kinda create something off of a plane and then mess around with those planes to apply different textures to those. So how would I be able to go about doing that? So I'm not uh, changing any of my settings or anything like that. What I want us to think about for today is what this plane can do for us. And right now, this is our default plane. And one of the major properties that a plane has is that it is UV unwrapped in a way that it exists from zero to one on the U and V axis. So we don't even need to worry about the uh, UV unwrapping on that. That actually we can use to our advantage quite a bit. So one of the first thing I wanna think about here is how to minimize the amount of polygons that I have. So I'm gonna make that one by one so I can work a little bit faster. Okay, so if this is gonna be a one, one by one, what that means for me is that I can modularly uh, build out a level by blocking that out using the grid system that's already existing in Maya. And again, this may be different than our final project for the requirements on that, but for now, let's see what this means if I were to hit the D key and move my, um, my pivot point to the corner here. So now that I have that over the corner and if I hold down the X key and then go over here, cool, I've got something like that. So you'll notice it fits within our, our grid very well. If I hit D to duplicate, hold down X and then snap, there we go. That's the idea of how modular levels would work is that everything kind of clicks together. Now we can offset things and break the symmetry of objects, but in an idea of modular levels, everything kind of has to fit and click together. Um, so characters can fit through doorways, so you can walk through certain spaces, um, or so you can um, do all kinds of different things for games. So this is a very helpful thing for me to know, is that my grid system is set up by default for me. So let's actually change this thing that I have by rotating it like this. So I'm actually gonna put these values at 90. And now that I have this up, I'm actually gonna freeze my transformation. So now this thing is up and down. And let's go into our materials here. So we opened up our hypershade. And I'm gonna go in and just create material I'm gonna use a blend. Now, blends, they transfer well. Um, they're nothing like the stingrays, 
but for what we're going to do for our final project, we're just going to use blends to create a painted texture on things. So that gives us our specular. We can add normals if we want um, and all that fun stuff. So what I'm going to first do is just drop my specular because I don't want to work with that right now. I just want to work with the color. And I know, does that sort of mean that this is the same thing as a Lambert? Yes, but no, Lambert doesn't give us those other options later on. Yes, we can add a normal map to it, but we have no shininess and that really doesn't make uh, normal maps look very great if we don't have some of those speculars that can pop on there. So now that I have this, I'm gonna go into my color settings and I'm going to go and click file. I'm gonna open up that file that I just, nope, not recordings. So it should have went right to where I was, but for whatever reason, it doesn't want to go there. We're gonna go inside of here and go to modular level images and we need to go to let's say we're going to work with this plaster wall so i'm going to hit open Let me close that okay i mean not close that but apply it to it and then close it so i'm going to go assign material and we'll call this texture um let's call that plaster wall mat so we know it's material Close that, and now hardware texturing is on. Oh, I've got myself a plaster wall. Now, if I were to take this thing, and I'm noticing that my texture, it looks like the light data, is it from the top? Mm, how is my texture in here? Let's find out. Okay, it looks like it's, I'll leave it alone for now. Let's take this thing and it may actually need to go like this. That makes more sense. So I'm going to fix that by rotating that texture on here. So I'm going to go to UV editor, grab this, and I'm just going to rotate that around. And to do that the fast way, and the not so sloppy way is go to our transformation and rotate twice. So now, does it not let me rotate? Oh, it is. It's just that um, I'm super tired and I'm expecting the image to rotate when the image is going to be stationary. Ah, sleepy time. Okay. So I'm gonna get this back to, let's just say that this is okay. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, so this is gonna be our, our texture. And now that I have this, if I need to work with this thing, this is where it gets really cool. I can hit Control D and then hold down the V key and then just snap that up. And now I, since I know this is a mirroring texture, or not mirroring, but it's repeating, I can easily build out modular pieces, but this is obviously uh, kind of a waste, right? Because we now have four sets of quads here. So four quads, and those could have been accomplished by having actually just one of these at a larger scale and then repeating our UVs. So we're not really getting much out of doing something like this. However, this is where um, we can really get some cool stuff. I'm gonna grab this this bottom one and let's actually add a new material. Let me duplicate this. And with this one, I'm gonna add let's go into let's use this half wall. So I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna select that one, I'm gonna go open, and I'm gonna now assign that to this bottom piece. So just middle mouse button, drag that, and if it cooperates, there we go. Okay, so what can I do with this? Let me, again, UVs, UV editor, and rotate that thing around. So grab that and rotate. Okay. Now that I have this, looks a little bit odd because I got wood on the bottom and this piece here. So what I could do with this is a very quick 
adjustment where I could go into my multi-cut, hold down the Alt key and the Shift key, and snap that right there. Now I can just delete this part out and go to my edge, hold down the X key, snap that to the bottom. And you'll notice, yes, I have a stretched texture right now, but the way it's designed is actually not that big of a deal. All right, now that I've done that, that's still wicked. I just used a term. Well, not usually something I use wicked. I can tell I'm tired. Um, that is, it's, it's very flat, right? So how do we fix that? Very easy. I'm going to go into here. And I'm gonna actually add some more cuts on this polygon. So I'm gonna go to multi-cut, and I'm gonna maybe make a cut around here. And I'm gonna cut here and maybe here. And I'm gonna go here and here. All right, here's where the magic happens. If I select this polygon and that polygon, I'm gonna pull it out. Ooh. What did I just do? Well, I just made a super flat texture, not so flat by pulling that out. I know that there's some stretching that's gonna occur, but if this is going to be from, let's say a top down or side um, orthographic view, it's not really gonna be that noticeable. So we can take advantage of sometimes when that happens. Other things we can do too, this is kind of at a, um, at an angle. Let's just tuck that down now. So these are a little bit closer to where they should be. Same thing with this. We're going to move this up and then move this one right here up. So now we have a faked 3D wall. It's not really faked, it's real, except the reality of this is that it actually all started from a 2D texture. So we saved ourselves a lot of time. Now, if I were to take this and hit Control D and snap that, oh snap, we now have, not sure why there's a little bit of a glitch there. Um, I can clean that up in my textures to fix that repeating texture, but we can have, let's just start building something. Duplicate, snap, okay. Same thing with here, I can grab all these things and I built a wall, and I built brick wall. So, okay, we're, we're building some stuff. Um, what else can we add to this scene? Well, right now, if we're to think about how tall this would be, if this is like a, the, the bottom part, maybe this needs to go up maybe one more. Now again, we could do that by duplicating it, or we can cheat. So I moved this one up here. I can grab this one, Holding down the V key, snap that up. Now I'm gonna hide that one so I can get that one out of here by hiding the one I wanted, hit delete, and then control shift H and bring that one back. Is there texture stretching? Yes, there's texture stretching here. Um, is it noticeable? Well, let's find out when we duplicate that over. Yeah, a little bit. It kind of looks more like leather, uh, the, the way I designed this. So it's not exactly the best looking thing, but um, that's looking a little bit more, let's say that we have a character in here and that character needed to be, so this is like three feet each time. Let's say that this needs to be uh, double that size. So if we go to our scale on Y, we hit two and I'm gonna hit the D key, hold down the X and or V and snap it down X there we go so this would be an approximate of maybe like a six foot tall figure walking around that's kind of cool all right where did you go don't don't leave me wall don't do that there we go all right so I've got this going on what else can I add in here well in video games sometimes the way to cheat in case you got an ugly little seam is to add I know I just hid one of those, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab this guy, and I'm gonna make it scale on the Z and the X. Let's go like 0.2. And we're gonna hit the D key again, and we're gonna go and snap that to the bottom of it. 
And now we're gonna hold on the X key and snap that to the grid. Okay, I've got this thing. What can this be? Let's go to our textures. And we're, so we're gonna go to our materials and we're gonna make another one. So duplicate and let's source. Okay, so that's already there. Um, we can source this one. I really don't like the way that this wood came out. So uh, let's try it for now. And if not, we'll, we'll set it on fire and pretend that this never happened. Um, we're gonna use this one. We're gonna grab this right here, right click and assign material to selection. And oh snap, that looks like garbage. A, because I'm not the greatest texture artist, but B, um, it's not unwrapping correctly, right? So let's go to UV editor and ooh, that's gross. How do we fix that? Well, first thing you need to do is figure out where our top and bottom are. So tops there and tops here. So what that's telling me is I don't want these to be with this map. So we're gonna go to cut. So we're gonna grab these two, move them away. Get them out of here. Now we need to know where our sides are. Oh wait, we already do. They're all going around here. The problem is we don't know where our tops and bottoms for the sides are gonna be until we start to look at the UVs. So if I go to the UVs, okay, I have all of the sides there, but what is this thing? Where's that guy? Let me select that. Okay, there's that guy, but where is... Okay, so it appears that this is upside down in relationship to these guys. So as a matter of fact, if I look at the edge, yes, that's upside down. So if I select this one and I flip it, Okay, and where's my edge now? Okay, it is where it needs to be. So if I move this and move it over, all right, I can do a couple different things here. I can either have this so it's stretched out. So if I took all of this, and first let me, let me show you what this is gonna do. I'm gonna take my merge, and now I'm gonna go to face, and I'm gonna rotate this, bring it over here, scale it down. Excellent. And now scale it up this way. Scale it up. And just trying to make sure it fits within where it's supposed to be. So this is one way we can deal with wood textures is I've wrapped that around, but if we look at what this did on here, that doesn't look like wood. That looks um, not good. So a better way to be able to apply this texture is to have that, that grain maybe doubled up instead. So let's take all these and move them down. And I'm gonna grab the UVs from here and move this to the middle. And now you'll see there's the wood across right here. A little bit better. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm actually gonna take these, cut, and move that up. Now I'm gonna grab these, okay, so now, easiest way, I'm gonna grab these, and I'm gonna grab these, and let's go to our align and we'll just make the bottom of line. So it'll grab all the base area. Now I'm gonna grab the top ones up here and this middle section and do that again. So it's gonna take these tops and put them to this lower spot. So align it to there. And then last but not least, we'll do this again. And now it's duplicating itself around this piece. Now it is going beyond where it needs to go. Cause you can see if I zoom in, I've got this little bit of a, a um, seam. So that's an easy thing to fix by holding on the X key and snapping that down. It's a lot better. All right. So this wood is interesting, um, but it's not actually not up to size. Also my color, it's, that's like warm, sunny day. And this is dark dungeon. So that's what I'm talking about on, uh, when I put these together, I threw a bunch of different textures that I created to put this in. Um, there, there wasn't as much of a thought process as there should have been. 
but for the sake of getting this tutorial out I ended up doing that um, yes it's naughty um, so I'm actually gonna fix that hold on let me okay that is fixed I just changed some of the color has made it a little more desaturated to fit in with this world it's still a little more tweaking could have happened on there I notice I have windows on the top of this that's something I should fix so if I go into my UVs UV editor on this we've got these we'll just bring them down and I'm gonna grab those and scale them so they are fitting on top of each other and now I'm gonna take both of these sides hold down X with my move tool snap it to there snap it to there there and there now this is another benefit of working with textures and knowing if you're gonna work in quads or um, not quads but you have uh, one long and then uh, two small ones here everything's kind of blocked out so it's very easy to use grid systems to to make all these things work for you so um, I always highly encourage students to think about how when you're making modular pieces how you can optimize your texture sheets so it's easier to put them together so all right I've got some wood grain on the top and on the bottom and now I've got this this is cool because now I can take that and my pivot point is in the middle and I can hit control D and snap and snap look at that I've got wooden planks pretty gross okay so let's how do I get that a little bit better well what if we ended up taking this thing and then beat it up a little bit so watch out I got a knife multi-cut what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take my multi-cut tool holding on control and I'm just gonna give it a couple cuts now that I have that take this double click scale it down maybe add a little bit of a rotation to it let's grab this vertice pull that over there grab this one move it up move that one in maybe now it's got some character to it we've taken something that was very boring and yes it's still a little boring but we made it feel like it's a little bit more um, stylized so not a lot of extra polygons as a matter of fact let's look at where we're at right now let's go into display heads up display polygon count and I've got 102 or nope I've actually got a hundred triangles on the nose right now so not a lot all right so maybe if we think about it we shouldn't have this thing going every single one of these that's maybe a little too much but oh look at that so we can stagger certain pieces and because we're working on grids look at that I've got a wall up and it took me very little time so I've got a lot of stuff that's already starting to happen for me that is um, not taking a lot of time right how do I cut in a window well first off what if we ended up taking this and then let's hold on the X key again and snapping that over there alright so I've got that actually um, twice as big now and I'm gonna go into my multi-cut tool and I'm gonna cut down the middle once and I'll cut over here and over here and I'm gonna cut here maybe here and maybe it's got a little bit of an arch to it so how could I add that well if I were to take this and if I think about the arch I'm gonna actually add some extra cuts and I'll clean those up later on there's a reason why I'm gonna do this by doing this I can see a natural arch going on here now am I gonna be able to get that 100% where I had that other one no so I need to figure out if I can snap this so if this is at let's say at 30% holding on shift I can let go and then go to here let's go over here and then start to snap so nine eight seven so that would be the same right there and then click there now I've got this thing 
Okay, what I ended up doing and why I ended up doing it this way is because by using the multi-cut, instead of actually cutting out this shape um, and moving the uh, existing geometry around, you're gonna have stretching when you do that to try and shape things. So instead, by cutting things and then removing polygons that I don't need, I'm actually giving myself a lot easier time uh, of unwrapping this. So um, that's, that's looking okay. Maybe this should have been beveled. So what if we ended up doing one more thing? Just take this and we'll add a bevel to it and we'll make that fraction pretty small. Okay, so now I'll add one more multi-cut and then we're gonna do that one more time. Or we'll actually add two of these, okay. So we're gonna go again into multi-cut and click here and holding on shift, we wanna make sure that we can get this thing Okay, we'll go right down the middle into there. Wait, why don't you wanna? Multi-cut, snap is on. Looks like it's maybe glitching. Oh, there we go. So first you have to, of course, you have to hold down left click like you're about to cut and then hold down shift then it'll turn that on. All right, there's, there's one side. And we're gonna do that one more time and hit the, the Y key to activate that last tool. And right here, right there, okay. Now that I have this, time to clean this thing up. I don't need this much geometry, or do I? Well, I really don't. Um, if you look at this, there's a lot of wasted spots here. And some of those things I can see, so, some of them need to exist, but some of these do not. Right here and here, here and here. If we were to get all rid of these, we'd have an end gone. However, if I were to get rid of this and this, and I'm gonna hit um, the delete edge, and that's just control delete as well. Now I have quads going up. So I've cleaned up my geometry pretty uh, decently for this. So that's good. Now I can start to do some work on getting this into a window. So what I'm gonna do is take this, holding down the shift key, just pull that out. And maybe it's not a window, maybe it's a little cubby, it depends on what the heck you guys are trying to do. Um, but this is an easy way that we can build something in like that. So let's go into our textures here. And one of these had that window section on there. Let's, let's see what happens if I were to add those on here. I know it's not gonna look great, but let's play along for now. Right click assign material to selection. And holy cow, that looks terrible. So let's see what our UVs are doing. Okay, so my UVs for this one spot are right here. Let's fix that. I'm gonna take that, and again, I'm gonna go to split. And I'm gonna take those, and actually let's do cut. I'm gonna cut that shape. No, we'll do split. Okay, so we got this. I'm gonna now make sure that I sew so I'm gonna just merge that and uh, let's rotate this and bring it here and scale it down. All right, now that I have something like this, I can move that up a little bit more. Okay, close that. Oh, look at that. What a fancy little level that we're making right now, right? Very little work. Because who wants to work, right? I mean, come on. Now, this is all the work that's been done by thinking about things before you start throwing a bunch of stuff all over the place. Um, this is the part that, for those of you who are really taking this degree seriously, um, your pre-production is, is your total tell. Like, if you're, if you're kicking ass and making some sketches and comps, you're gonna be able to uh, create that vision a lot easier than just popping in something randomly 
and saying, yeah, I did this. It's, it's just never going to be an efficient way to work. You need to think out your process before you start to construct things. So um, this is looking okay, but you know what? If I'm in a little fantasy environment, I would want some birds to come and talk to me because maybe I'm lonely. Uh, maybe I have really long golden hair and um, it allows for, uh, I guess, princes to climb my hair and rescue me from some weird witch. And so I need to have like a little, little spot for me to hang out of my window to let down my hair. There we go. I did that. Look, I did that. So this is again using the same chunks of wood that we already had. So reduce, reuse, recycle, right? It's that reuse part, I think, of, of that slogan. And now it's being reused and I've got this little fun little ledge that I just popped in in two seconds that I already used somewhere else. Now scale it and make it so it feels unique. That's pretty cool. As a matter of fact, that could be an entire chunk that we can use and duplicate over and over again. So we're getting some nice pieces constructed here, again, without going super crazy on building this content. As a matter of fact, if I were to duplicate these things, make a box, I already have a level. I need to put some flooring in now. And by flooring, the first thing I'm going to use is some stones. So I'm going to go into my um, create materials, blend. I'm going to drop that spec and I'm going to go into my color and let's load in this. So stone floor. All right. Now that I have this, let's add that to this piece. So stone floor. Let's just make sure we label this thing. Stone floor MAT. And now I've got this thing. Now, before I do anything, I'm actually going to define the edges because once the edges are defined, the flooring is easy to plop in. Um, so I'm actually going to take all this and I actually like the way that that texture looks this way. So I'm going to grab this, snap it over. Now I've got two modular pieces really. I've got this piece and then I have the one with the window. So I can take all of this and do a mesh combine and I'm going to snap my control or my gizmo here. So my pivot is down here and do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to hit the D key Oop, first mesh combine D down and over and I've got, let's say, wall window, and we'll just call that A. And this will just be wall basic A. All right, both of these things need to have their histories deleted. And now I've got both of them ready to go. I can get rid of this one, I can get rid of this thing. Um, or I can have that set aside just to fix certain things. We'll do that. All right, let's build a room. So I'm going to say maybe it's only about this big. So duplicate, move it over. And let's duplicate it, move it over, and then rotate negative 90. And now we're going to duplicate this one. And we're going to put that over here feels like working with Legos. It doesn't feel like the stressful modeling. You're just, just having fun, I hope. All right, duplicate this one. And now we're gonna go and rotate that, uh, what, negative 180? Oh, math, I'm doing it. I'm doing math today, guys. Okay, so I've got this and I'm going to rotate that negative 180, duplicate over here, duplicate, this is going to save myself some time by 
not there we go. All right, we're going to just do a couple more of these. What the heck? I didn't want to save. All right, now that I have this, duplicate, move it over, and we're going to make this negative 270. Oh. That one, I felt it. That was, that was pretty heavy math right there for me. I'm not even joking. Okay. I've got that and I got this and I got this. Oh, which one's different? This one. Okay. Wow, guys, look at this room. It's like I'm hanging out in a tavern with my non-existent friends playing World of Warcraft um, stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Cool. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay. I've got this over here. This is where we don't need to please don't you don't do this and do this forever that's 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 crazy stuff that's not what we should be doing let's move this over to the corner and then let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten by ten right so to be able to get this to work for us Let's grab the vertices on this, snap it over there, and bring it over there and just say this is what we meant to do. Now, let's go into here and let's go into our materials. If we look at our stone floor and we graph that network, let's go into our repeat UVs and we're going to go 10 by 10. And now that we did that, we're going to close this and realize that we forgot to hit enter on that one command. And now it looks terrible. We'll go back into it one more time because I messed up. And oh, and welcome to my little, my little place. You know, it could use a couple rugs. It could use some places to relax. Um, it's not done, but I made a place pretty quickly. Um, one thing to realize when you're playing, and this is, I'm sure when you guys are Fortnite and you're, you're dropping from your battle bus, you're like, Hey, look at that pattern. And as you zoom in and you you land, you start to forget that pattern as it goes. And that's, that has to do with how humans, um, are programmed to be able to look for patterns and all that fun stuff. Right now, this one stands out. It should be desaturated. Um, it should be lightened up to match the rest of this. However, when we're just playing in a game, we're like actually exploring in a game or something like that, we actually don't recognize it so much. Um, other critiques that I'm seeing on this for myself are this bottom part needs to be a lot darker than over here. So when we build stuff, sometimes when we're looking at it in a 2D form, we don't actually see the problems until they get into 3D. So that's why it's very important to make sure you always keep things in Photoshop file so they're editable. If your art director comes by and she says, hey, um, this needed to be, if this is the, um, I don't know, the tipsy pony in and uh, this needed to be changed to the um, the unibrow unicorn in and they had orange glass in the graphic novel that we were trying to replicate in our video game, then you need to change that. And it's very hard to do that by going in and just editing a PNG. But it's a lot easier if it's a uh, Photoshop file and you can grab just the glass and modify that if the metal separate in uh, different layers. So be aware of those things. All right, let's add a couple other things to this um, and call it quits for this first tutorial. The first thing I want to add is ground. And by ground, I mean um, a carpet or a throw rug or something. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to say that this goes all the way across and it's going to go into another room from start to finish. So to do that, I'm going to go into my plane and change that one by one. And oh, look at my naming. It's actually working in here except for my floor. So let's make sure that that is stone floor. And this is going to be rug. Okay, so this rug doesn't look like anything else, but we're going to change that. First thing we need to do is 
We want to make sure that we don't have any fighting with Z-buffering, so we need to move this up a little bit. As a matter of fact, you can see that happening right here. You've all seen this when somebody in a video game, um, like during development when they were working on it, accidentally duplicated something and they're on top of each other. It gives you the shimmers. And these shimmers are happening because two polygons are on top of each other and the graphics don't know which one to show you first, so they flash it at you. Uh, hoping to appease you instead of freaking out. So this will happen in any engine. Um, it's important to make sure you're at the level that you're going to be in engine and to play it to see if you're getting those shimmers. Right now I'm not seeing that. If I'm further away you can start to have that happen, but that actually happens um, in the best of games as well. So just a little bit of a height increase on this you don't need to go super far you don't want it to be something like this but something like this is fine and what we're going to do now is i'm going to make a new blend so i'm just duplicating this one right here i'm going to call that rug material and i'm going to open up my file loader and go I just labeled that something that's totally not the name of it, but uh, I'm loading my file, I'm grabbing this one, and I'm gonna hit open. Now, this is cool because this one has transparency on this PNG, so that's very helpful. I'm gonna grab this and then grab that and then assign material to selection. Cool. Now, I'm gonna move that over for a second. When we're looking at this, maybe it doesn't look like a rug yet, but if I were to take this thing and again, go over here and snap it there and go over here and snap it there. Now it's stretched out in garbage. Let's fix that. Let's go in to our repeat. And I need this to repeat on my, what is it? My Z. So let's say, I think it's going to be this one. Let's try to repeat this one. So let's go um, 10. There we go. And now this is repeating 10 times. And we're looking at it from the proper view here. We have this rug that goes across here. So let's just change some stuff in here. I'm going to duplicate that and bring that over here zero and with this one I'm gonna go over snap it to there and then snap it over to here and then go negative 180 and this is why I keep this one separate so I can duplicate this piece and snap it over and oh snap I now have a spot where I'm missing some polygons. How do I get that floor to work? Well, that's where we can add another polygon over here. Let's change our number so it's one by one. Let's also make sure that the pivot point is down at the bottom like everything else we're working with. And let's build that up so it's actually going to be two by two. And if I were to apply that, what does that do? Okay, this is the error that can happen because I'm working with my UVs in uh, Maya and I'm having that repeat in here. So it's not actually looking great when I duplicate that. So that idea of having these go like this, unfortunately does kind of make sense because in engine, this would be something we'd set up using uh, specific geometries for our floor that we have um, repeat but in Maya it's really not wanting to cooperate for us like this so when we get to a spot like this instead of a large area we can just duplicate that or let's bring this over to here and then over to here and go into our UVs and we're gonna modify the UVs on this one and chop it down so two different ways that we could work. I'm going to do it the easiest way. I'm going to chop this thing down. So 
it's going to be a little bit easier to look at. So UVs, and so now I am almost at the right level. So I'm gonna go two by two, because I know that's two by two that I had to make. And now you're not seeing any of these issues. So this is an easy way where we can work. Again, thankfully, because I know what my grid system is, I can just change that out and now I have this thing happening. So in our next video, I'll show putting in a door and some stairs and some other fun stuff on that. But this is to get our, a taste of how things can go um, for our scene. Um, if this is happening too, we can either duplicate that and I'm just going to move that to here. Multi-cut. Oops. Snap. And because again, I have a grid there, delete that part. And now that's repeating. I could have done that also by just ending that over there. And then, um, I could have, uh, change my UVs to repeat a little bit more, but that's how we can get all these things going. Um, hopefully this is kind of sets the tone for, um, what we're looking for, for our final project. Um, we'll have more information on that real soon. So, all right. I will see you guys in the next one.